Hello, my name is Anthony Vega. Today I'll be talking about the Harlem Children's Initiative. Um, I'll be speaking about certain points that came throughout uh, the video that we that I watched called the Harlem Children's Zone. Um, we can start off with exactly what is the Harlem Children's Initiative. And the Harlem Children's Initiative is a program created by Jeffrey Canada to help underprivileged children in the inner city of Harlem have access to proper education. Whether it be faculty and staff that cares about the students and their well-being, whether it be a building, in this case, it was the Promise School that allowed these students to go get an education in an area that generally cared about their well-being, their progress, and um, even taking courses that helped them further in life, such as cooking classes, uh, and then obviously, you know, the courses that they have, which is math, reading, science, all that good stuff. Um, throughout uh, the Harlem Children's Initiative, um, Canada did a great job of creating an educational system that helped those in dire need of it, such as the, the societal members of the inner city of Harlem. Uh, as we know, the inner city of Harlem has been, hasn't been that safe in an environment for children growing up, especially due to uh, gang, affiliate, gang affiliated situations that occurred throughout the community. The community is also very, um, it's very inversed in poverty. So a lot of things such as drugs uh, and things like that have been, you know, circulating throughout the community for a long time now. Um, uh, to further to further explain what Canada did for the community, the Harlem Children's Initiative was also, um, or led to the creation, like I said before, of a charter school that was not bound by the rules of a public school. So Canada was able to insert rules and, um, regulations that helped, uh, in his eyes, discipline students, allow them to continue with their learning, allow them to grow, allow them to to create their own version of success within school grounds. And this included less summer days, strict uniform policies, and even um, having a good amount of adults in the classrooms so that the students can speak to them if they needed any help. For example, every six students that came through um through the classrooms, they would also they would also be an adult accompanying those six students. Not exactly those six students, but just in the classroom as a whole. Um some community intervention components I believe were incorporated into a children's um initiative <clears throat> was a sense of togetherness, a sense of well being, a sense of understanding where these students are coming from, uh and knowing what exactly these students are going through on a daily basis so they can use that to further, you know, make these kids feel better on school grounds. Mm, Canada himself went through the situation growing up in Harlem where he didn't really have a school he could go to. He didn't have those people that were there with him um, every step of the way, allowing him to grow, helping him out, making sure that he stayed focused, that he stayed um, on course to get a college degree. So he made sure through his eyes that the making the classes smaller, creating a more intimate setting, and just overall putting their maximum effort in these kids' ability to learn and grow would allow um, a level of growth that's perfect for uh, what Canada was trying to accomplish. Even creating a clinic and having um, counselors on site at all times to create, you know, a level of uh, security, even if an, an individual or a student felt sick, they always had the psychological means, the physical means to feel better, to to cope with certain things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, now, when it came to the program components and how it affected community members, uh, these programs helped community members a ton. Um, they allowed for students, like I said prior to to bringing up the information, students to to go somewhere if they needed to feel better, to if they felt sick to attend the clinic, if um they felt like they weren't getting the means to learn or the means to to further develop, they had it there um in the school. However, one thing that was um alarming to me and obviously I understand the situation of it was when they had the lottery for the kids coming into the school. But I completely understood that situation of the argument. Obviously, if you have uh, X amount of students trying to get into the school, for example, the school's population is 400 and there's about a thousand kids trying to come into the school. I think it's a little overstretched, but you get the idea. Um, it just wouldn't be fair to 
to choose which students get in. It's obviously more fair to do a lottery. And if your child's able to get in, then you're good. If your child's not able to get in, unfortunately, it won't work. However, Canada did a great job of creating a pipeline source, <clears throat> a pipeline source outside of school grounds that would allow students, although they did not attend a charter school or have access to the school, to be able to have access to the programs that are created by byproduct of the school. So Canada did a great job of just creating programs outside of the already created programs for the children in the um, area around Harlem.